has been my work over the last 10 years, trying to bring these communities together to have these uh, open discussions about uh, topics that have been taboos. And um, yeah, thanks for the FLA crew to have been able to create such a positive atmosphere. I say like a lot of smiles around me. Uh, in, uh, as, as Shane said, like, this is probably the most to important topic to have have these debates uh, about. And I think it's kind of like my relationship with Jürgen Schmidhuber. I don't know. There you are. <laughs> I think it's like an like, exemplified, uh, like ex good example of that uh, uh, spirit. Like we, like whenever we meet, like we have like a huge debates and like I'm kind of, uh, I caught myself like yelling at you every once in a while. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yet like every time we kind of leave, we are like, I think we are going to, getting better and better friends as a result. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, without further ado, um, my talk. Uh, my favorite piece of uh, parenting, adv parenting advice is to, that when you want to explain something to your kids, uh, treat them as adults and don't dump down your answer. Uh, because it's, uh, first of all, it's like a bit of mischievous fun uh, to watch them to try to decode what you just said. Uh, but more importantly, kids' abilities increase over time. Uh, so if you dilute your explanations, you're likely to keep just constantly undershooting their actual intellectual capabilities. Now, my original plan for this talk was to look back what has happened in AI safety since the last FLI conference, now keep positive feedback for the achievements uh, such as all the technical value uh, alignment work that has been done, take stock of the current challenges and generally kind of congratulate the community for coming together and ma maturing, maturing so quickly. I even have this prop here. Like uh, I, I created a draft where I, where I would use uh, 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 this shirt because I bought it from Puerto Rico after I, my luggage was lost uh, in transit. <laughs> But then it occurred to me, wait a minute, wouldn't that parenting advice apply here as well? Wouldn't I by just completely undershooting the intellectual level and the progress of this community? So I just deleted my draft and started over. A new topic. We need a way to figure out what humanity wants. When I talk about value alignment on, in public, one question I almost always get is, whose values are we talking about? And in response, I usually kind of mumble something about the vast majority of human values being so obvious that we don't even think about them. As Stuart Russell puts it, everyone values their right leg. Or my own favorite, everyone likes our planet to be roughly at room temperature. <laughs> that is not to say that we don't have a problem with aggregating our values. We do, a massive one. We don't know what the complete set of humanity's values are, not, nor can we simply ask people either, since, uh, as Daniel Kahneman has pointed out, uh, there is a difference between what people say what they value and what they actually value. Also, our values are clearly a moving target because they keep evolving over time. What's more, we don't have a great track record in coordinating on what we already know is valuable. The League of Nations failed to prevent World War II. And although the, although the UN has some successes on, under its belt, such as eradicating the smallpox and fixing the ozone layer, it's widely considered, well, somewhat ineffective at its job. Also, free markets and democracy, although seemingly better than the alternatives, seem limited in their ability to steer the world towards a bright future, especially we think about the recent events. Indeed, I think that the biggest disservice that capitalism has done to the world is that it has created a false sense of security in technological progress. Not to mention the thorny philosophical paradoxes with value aggregation and even potential dependencies on some unknown laws of physics when we get down to the sort of nitty gritty of how the aggregation, value aggregation should work. Yet there is hope. First of all, we now know much more about morality, human values, and game theory 
than we did when, say, the UN was established. Second, various new technologies seem to favor global coordination. For example, the internet and mobiles have connected the planet. Cheap satellites and other sensors will create an explosion in transparency, for better or for worse. And the invention of crypto economics has introduced a new regime. It's now possible to have worldwide consensus about a piece of data without trusting any central authority to maintain it. Now, I have many examples, but just to give one example about what can be done with crypto economics, it's now possible to create global decentralized courts. And I got this idea from Vitalik, who is also here in the audience, on blockchains that resolve conflicts uh, by enlisting random people as jury and then game theoretically incentivizing them to produce opinions that society in general would find fair. Not to mention that the continued advances in AI and techniques such as uh, inverse reinforcement learning and approval directed agents by Paul Cristiano seem extremely relevant here. So therefore I'm, pr I'm proposing that we start designing explicit mechanisms to transparently and robustly aggregate global opinion about what a good future should look like. The mechanisms have to be open and transparent, blockchain style, to instill trust that their purpose is to serve everyone in fair manner. They have to be robust in the sense of being hard to game, corrupt or otherwise defect against. This probably requires incorporating uh, philosophical meta principles such as veil of ignorance. That is, you could only benefit from the system as a random member of humanity, not as a particular person in a particular position. So basically I'm advocating extending the technical approach that has been very successful in advancing the frontier in AI safety thinking to the problem of global preference discovery. About AI safety thinking, I think someone in uh, CSER or FHI gave this wonderful metaphor that uh, the process uh, that has been unfolding in the last few years is like a sort of high altitude bombardment by very kind of prominent people. The canonical example, of course, Elon Musk and uh, Stephen Hawking, followed by ground troops of safety researchers. So like some people who are kind of, uh, still shooting at airplanes uh, might be doing so from position that already has been claimed by safety research, uh, active safety research. Of course, all this uh, new technology can also make things harder. One man's coordination is another man's collusion. We have to be careful not to catalyze criminal activity or worse, paint humanity into a corner by introducing terrible Nash equilibria on a global scale. Not to mention the clear and present danger of various AI arms races, something like Nick just talked about, both literal and figurative. We absolutely need to avoid this. And I know this think, topic has been on Demis' mind uh, for a long time. And finally, the looming AGI limits our time budget. We have lost over half a century since the original warnings about AI value alignment by Alan Turing and Norbert Wiener. I certainly hope that we have still another 50, but I know that several experts in this room are much more optimistic about AI timelines and thus pessimistic about our remaining time budget. Now, last month there was a workshop at FHI in Oxford where one of the sessions was about uh, what to do if the value alignment won't be solved in time. And it had this eerie atmosphere of a science fiction story featuring an alien fleet in orbit, aliens who couldn't care less about humanity, and then a room full of decision theory experts trying to find a philosophical loophole that would allow humanity to keep just at least one galaxy out of the 100 billion. One galaxy as a consolation prize for the loser. That's 50 personal star systems for every human alive today. With that, I want to illustrate two, two, two things. First, even if you mostly screw up, things might still turn out to be pretty okay in the end. And second, the worst thing we could do is to continue playing our usual political zero-sum games while losing 50 galaxies per second. Luckily, a transparent preference discovery mechanism might serve as a ladder for humanity to climb out of the arms races and other badness equilibriums. 
It might also help with a problem that many of you personally feel. Society doesn't necessarily trust you with the power you have over the future. Granted, they might trust you more than the politicians. But come on, that's a pretty low standard. Of course, there's a valid reason for that mistrust. History is littered with catastrophic tragedies caused by individuals or movements that amassed too much power. I should know that, having personally experienced the tail end of one such tragedy. Now imagine if there was a way to credibly demonstrate that you're working towards a future, not just what you personally thought was a good idea, but towards the future indicated by the global preference discovery mechanism. It's sort of what uh, OpenAI people have been talking about, but on steroids. Finally, having a strong selling point for humanity's values should be a great tool for philanthropists, effective altruists, and politicians who genuinely want to improve the human condition. And of course, ultimately, we want the mechanism to converge into something that can safely guide a superhuman AI. Two years ago, standing in front of this conference, I compared AI development to launching a rocket. Initially, you mostly worry about having enough acceleration, but eventually steering should become your primary concern. To summar summarize my current talk, I would kind of extend, extend this metaphor to say that now that the AI researchers are pro producing even more powerful engines and the steering systems designed by AI safety researchers is also progressing, it's about time to start plotting our eventual trajectory. Crucially, the trajectory planning must be globally transparent and fair because everyone, everyone will be on board. Thank you.